What's going on everybody? Ryan Collins with Midwest Outdoors here. I hope everyone is doing great. So here in Southwest Ohio where I'm at, unfortunately my fishing season has been done for a couple months now. But with that being said, we are getting a glimpse of warmer weather, which means spring is right around the corner, which means fishing is right around the corner. In fact, my first scheduled tournament is about a month away, so I'm really looking forward to that. Now, just because I'm not currently fishing doesn't mean that I'm not putting in a lot of time and effort inside of my home to help me become a better and more efficient angler. Whether that be organizing tackle, organizing my boat, or research and planning. And that's what I want to talk about today is the research and planning side of things. There are a ton of free tools available to everybody that I utilize on a daily basis. Whether it just be a fun trip to the lake, a day on the water, or a big tournament, these are tools that I use every single time I'm about to hit the water so that way I can spend less time looking for fish and hopefully more time catching fish. So what I want to do today is bring you guys into my computer screen, show you some of these free tools, and how I utilize them to become a more efficient angler. The great thing about these tools is that you, again, you do them inside the comfort of your home. So whether you're on your laptop, on the couch, watching TV, uh, I do mine here on my computer. These tools are available to everybody. So I want to bring you inside of my computer screen, again, show you some of these awesome free tools, how I use them, and help you become a more efficient angler. So that way, again, you spend less time looking for fish and hopefully catching more fish. So let's hop into my computer screen. Let's go over a few of these and we'll go from there. The first tool I want to go over is one that I use all of the time. It is also one that is available on your phone. So I find myself looking at this constantly, even when I'm laying in bed or, or whatever. I'm usually pulling up my phone and looking at it. Um, so what we're going to do is open up your browser. Let's go to webapp.navionics.com. So I'm sure a lot of you maybe already be familiar with Navionics, but uh, I use it so much that I just wanted to touch base on it. So what Navionics is, it's a very in-depth, detailed uh, lake contour software. Um, you're also available in, in for your electronics through your SD cards, um, but those are well over $100, and their web app and mobile app are free. Um, so definitely take advantage of them. So what I want to do here is just kind of pick a lake um, that I've never been to before and show you guys how I use this uh, to help me become more efficient on the water and so that way when I get to the lake uh, again I spend less time looking for fish and I already have a basic idea of where I want to look and areas that I want to start targeting so again I'm in southwest Ohio um, so I want to find a lake that I actually have never been to we don't have many lakes but uh, I'm sure we can find one here um, so let's go to uh, CJ Brown. I've never been to CJ Brown. Uh, it's not crazy far from my house, just never had the opportunity to go. So let's look at CJ Brown. So the way Navionics works, everything is gonna be in one foot, one foot contour intervals. So every time you see one of these lines, uh, that means that there's a one foot depth change. So if you're familiar with to uh, topo maps, works the same way. So whenever you have lines really close together, like that what we see here, over here, here, that means that there's gonna be a sharp drop off. So if we zoom in to this east side over here, you can see that it's 10 foot up on top of here, and then it really, around that 11, 12 foot range, it really starts to drop pretty quick. And you can see that there's an underwater pond here uh, and about 31 feet of water. So that's just a basic idea of how the, the, the topo maps work. Um, and then obviously vice versa, when the one foot contours are spread way out, uh, you're gonna see a lot flatter area. So right next to this, we have a 10 foot high spot here. And then you can see it goes from 11 to 12 to 13 to 14 in a pretty wide area. So from the center of this 10 foot hump here, all the way out to this 14 feet, this is only a four foot difference um, from here to here. So. It takes it a lot longer to, to drop off compared to here where it goes from 11 to 30 in a very short amount of time. So all of you offshore guys, this is a great tool. I use it all the time when I'm at like Kentucky Lake looking for uh, ledges or offshore areas. Uh, again, kind of the same idea over here. Uh, things that I really look for is where we have this uh, underwater point right here in 15 foot of water. 
and then it drops and has got some deep water access right next to it. So uh, we're not gonna really get into seasonal patterns in this. I just kinda wanna go over the free tools. Um, but this is a great tool when I know a general idea of what seasonal pattern the, the fish are in. So in the summer, I'm gonna be looking at some of these flats out here, some of these drop-offs, underwater ponds, uh, anywhere there's some deep water access. And then in the spring, vice versa, I'm gonna start looking for where these creek beds are running into uh, these little pockets and creeks where they may be spawning at. Um, maybe some north area here where we got all these this flat out here and then real shallow water back by all these islands. So that way, again, when I know that uh, they should be in a general season, seasonal pattern, uh, I can already eliminate water. So if it's if the water temp is going to be 60 degrees plus and it's April, May around here, I know that these bass are going to be shallow and wanting to spawn very soon. So I'm probably going to ignore some of this deeper water out here and really focus again on these creeks and shallow area and then vice versa if it's the dead heat of summer fishing's tough that's when i want to start looking at some of these offshore areas these humps these ponds um, anything offshore where the bass should be so another really good thing i like about navionics is they give you a lot of information in terms of structure and underwater cover um, so if we look here, there's a submerged bridge uh, that could be a railroad bed. So yeah, submerged railroad um, that actually runs pretty much the whole length of this lake, which is kind of cool. So what you want to look for is those high percentage areas. We have a point that comes off of the dam here. So you can see the shoreline structure here if we zoom in. It makes this point and then obviously the contours follow around that point. So it looks like that point up shallow, um, 10 feet, so it drops off fairly quick. Um, and then out at the end, we're out into 30 foot of water. So back to that railroad bed that we mentioned before, uh, you can see that it runs right across this point. Um, so not only do we have a point now that's gonna hold fish, uh, now we're gonna have a submerged bridge or structure that is also gonna congregate fish. And now that I zoomed in here, I see that there's another underwater pond here so whether that old pond had some riprap, maybe an old pond dam, something, uh, that's gonna create even more structure for those fish to hang around. So now we have three um, things of importance that are all in one area that is gonna help congregate fish. So we have the point, the railroad bed, and this pond. The cool thing about this point here is that, it, that this railroad bed runs all the way out to the deep water. So no matter where you find the fish, whatever depth range they're in, even if they're all the way up here in eight to 10 foot of water or out here in 25 plus feet of water, we're gonna have the ability to use this railroad bed, scan this, start fishing around, finding out what depth those fish are in and, uh, and go from there. So uh, as we kind of look around, you can see there's an old road bed here that runs off of uh, off the dam as well. Um, kind of looking around, just some stuff that stands out to me. Again, this kind of deep water access over here, it's got an underwater point that runs out from it as well. Um, you can see here, so in the summer again, this deep water access, so granted they may not be in 31 feet of water, but they could be up here in like 26 feet. And whenever it's that dinner bell goes off and they wanna start feeding, they're able to move up on this uh, underwater point here in 10 to 12 foot of water feed and then slide back out into the deeper water. Uh, this is interesting as well here. So we have another underwater pond here in about 39 feet of water, but we also have these two real shallow humps right here. So what also makes these good, again, the more pieces of structure or cover that is available to us, especially on a particular area, the better, and that's what I'm looking for. So I'll kind of break down this area right here. So we have a 17 foot hump, another 17 foot hump, we have deep water access with an old pond here. Uh, these red boxes typically mean some sort of structure. So whether that be old foundation, uh, bridge piling, something, there's some sort of structure off the end of these points. The pond here, so maybe that's an old, uh, I mean, I, some of the lakes I fish, those are old neighborhoods that have been flooded. So it could really be anything. Be interesting to take side scan out there and see what it is. But back to the topic, we have a road bed that runs right down to the east side of this hump and then right over the top of this second hump. 
Um, this road bed also comes out and kind of makes like a cul-de-sac basically or a loop. So maybe these are some old house foundations. But so this road bed runs right over top of this hump. So when these bass are out here hanging in 25, maybe plus foot of water and it's time to feed, they're able to slide up onto this little hump here, feed on whatever they're feeding on, more than likely just shad. This 17 foot hump with the structure around here. So we have a road bed, a hump, structure, and deep water access. During the summer months, this is definitely gonna be a place that I'm gonna to wanna to check. Same with the one down here with this uh, road bed running right over the top of it. So as we keep sliding up again, road bed goes right over the top of uh, this hump as well. This is a kind of a flat with a really subtle hump right here. Again, more deep water access uh, with an underwater point here up in sh the shallow. So that could be another good spot later in the year. As we move up the lake, uh, so this stands out to me again. Navionics is one that I use a lot for, for offshore fishing, as you can tell, just because it's so detailed. But uh, as we look here, so we have obviously the main point here, but then we have an underwater point that's formed off of this, uh, off the side of this point. So, and this is actually a really shallow one, so it's only about five feet on top, um, but out on the end of it, it's about 16 to 18 feet. And again, that same submerged bridge or railroad bed runs right off the end of this point. So again, we have multiple things that are going to be attracting and congregating fish to this area. So again, later in the year, pre-spawn, um, the fall, summer, this is gonna be an area that when I get to the lake, I know I'm gonna wanna check um, because they can be on top of this feeding, they can be out here just kind of schooled up. And then again, we have this submerged bridge railroad bed um, out here that these bass are gonna use. Um, as we come around here again, back to the tight contour lines means it's a really steep drop off. I love bluff walls. Bluff walls tend to hold fish year round. Um, so to me, a bluff wall is just anywhere where the channel or there's extremely deep water access right up against the bank. So if we take an example here, um, it's only three or four feet deep, a good ways off the bank. Compared to if we zoom in here, you can see the contour lines are tight. We have 18 feet of water real close to the bank here. Um, so this is what I would consider a bluff wall. So I would know I'd want to check that year round. Um, as we make our way up here again, um, during the spring, this could be a, a good spawning area. You can see that this uh, creek, this old creek bed is running right in and out of here. Most fish are going to use creeks as, uh, as their highways to, to navigate. Um, so during the spring, these bass or fish are going to be using this creek bed, traveling back here, potentially spawning in this shallow water back here around these islands. So I know here in just a little bit, here in a couple months, um, during that spawn season, this is gonna be an area that I wanna check for sure. Uh, again, we can see some creek beds running in here, a nice little flat here that they may use to spawn, some more creek beds, another little pocket over here. Um, these bass are going to be using this creek bed to come out of the deeper water into this pocket to spawn. So that'll be a place I would definitely want to check. Uh, down here towards the dam again, we have some flats back here, some shallow water back here uh, with a lot of deep water access here. So here real soon during the pre-spawn, this would be an area that I would want to check just because we have this deep water access that they're probably holding in right now uh, during the winter months. And then as it starts to warm up, these bass are going to start moving holding on these points here and then eventually moving back to spawn. So this would be a good bank to throw a jig down, a jerk bait, a deep diving crankbait, something because we know that these bass are probably going to be suspended holding out here and waiting to move back in uh, during the spawn. So this would definitely be an area that I would want to check. Um, so I spend a lot of time looking at this program, software, uh, app, whatever you want to call it. I spend a lot of time looking here marking waypoints on my phone so that way when I do get to the water I can go quickly check those areas and uh, be just be again be more efficient out on the water so again that's pretty much the basics of Navionics so next I want to switch over to my next free tool that I use probably even more than Navionics so let's hop into the next one okay so the next tool that I'm going to go over um, is one that I use a ton. 
Uh, I probably spend more hours on this than, than Navionics or any other tool, but I use them in conjunction with each other. Um, it's not actually online, but it is uh, something that is free and available to everybody, and that is Google Earth. So it's a quick download, just go to Google, type in Google Earth, it's available on Windows, Mac, whatever software or whatever uh, operating system you use, it's available for it. And I use Google Earth all of the time, uh, especially when I am looking for subtle areas or uh, spots that hopefully a lot of other anglers are overlooking. So once we fire up Google Earth, uh, let's go back to CJ Brown here. We're going to go ahead and zoom in, see if we can find it real quick. I believe this is it. It is. Okay. So this is CJ Brown. It's a typical aerial uh, photography of the lake. So nothing, you know, too spectacular so far, but uh, we're gonna show you how you can turn this into one of the most efficient tools you've ever seen or will use. So to start, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up to the top here and we're gonna click on this little time, or this little clock with an arrow that's historical imagery. So as you can see, we can go all the way back to 1985 and the newest picture, which was actually taken uh, in February of 2021. Um, so what I wanna do is the lake's actually down here, but if we look, it looks like it's down here, I would imagine. So yeah, so this looks like it's full pool here in July. Um, so you, again, if you zoom in, um, nothing too crazy, you know, nothing spectacular about it, but the historical imagery is where all the magic happens. So what we wanna do is for whatever particular body of water that you're researching, you wanna to try to find the historical image that has the least water level or when the lake was at its lowest point. Um, so again, it looks like it's pretty low here in uh, February, 2020. Um, so what this does, it gives us eyes under the water and that is a huge advantage. So let's start growing around here and I'll show you what I'm looking for. So if we zoom in down here, you can see uh, how much land uh, or underwater that we're able to see here compared to when the lake is up. Obviously we can't see anything because the water is covering it. So again, this historical imagery you're gonna see is it can make, uh, make or break a fishing trip or, or help you find some spots that no one really knows about. Um, so here's that point we were talking about with, uh, with that underwater bridge coming down. So I know this is gonna be a, a spot that I would wanna check, but let's start going uh, down the bank and seeing what we can find here. Uh, I'll show you guys how I use this. So if we zoom in here, we've obviously got a marina here. Uh, it looks like it's a pretty popular marina to fish. We've obviously got a bunch of riprap around here. There's one, two, three, four boats fishing this. So obviously a pretty popular area. And if I was gonna go to the lake and I didn't have Google Earth, chances are I'd probably be fishing this riprap. But hopefully we can find some things here that these guys don't know about. So let's keep working up this right hand bank here. Um, so here's a good example already. So we've got an underwater point here uh, with a lay down here and a big lay down here coming off the side of this point. So if we go back to when the water's up, we can barely see this tree here, but we can't see this lay down over here and we don't really see the underwater point that comes out here. So we go back to when the water's low. Now we can really see this lay down. We can see this lay down, these trees here. Uh, so this point actually makes a pretty decent shelf coming off here as well. Um, so I know if I'm going down this bank and I get to about this point, uh, maybe I wanna slide out a little bit deeper and see if that there's any fish holding off on this little shelf that this point creates. Um, and then going back to Navionics, so you can see here, uh, Navionics is, is it's detailed as it is, it doesn't show everything. So as you see, this point actually comes out and creates a little shelf. You don't really see that on Navionics, but you can see it clearly on Google Earth. Um, so that's why I use the two and two or the two hand in hand. Um, so again, I know when I get to this point that I'm definitely going to want to target this lay down. Um, I'm going to want to target this lay down in this little cut here and then obviously slide off and see if that there's any fish holding off of this shelf that this point makes. Um, so let's keep going up the lake. 
Um, so I'll zoom in. Uh, I'll even kind of move this uh, camera around. Oops, wrong way. To get like a better angle and then see if there's anything I'm missing. But this link, this bank looks kind of like a pretty do nothing bank here. Um, let's keep coming up. So we've got a lay down here that we probably don't see when the water is up. Uh, nope, not really. Um, so that's something that I'd want to keep an eye on. Um, as we come up here again, we've got a really big lay down here and then another lay down right next to it. If we go back to when the water is up, yeah, we don't see those at all. So if I am going down this bank, you may see the base of this lay down here up shallow, um, but you don't really know how far it comes out. So now looking at this, I know that this tree comes pretty far out when the water's up. So when I'm going down this bank, I may want to make a few casts out deeper to see if there's any bass holding on this uh, piece of cover uh, out in deeper water. Again, the same with this one that's right next to it. Uh, some more lay downs here. Let's keep going. Nothing, nothing. Got a few rocks here that could be good, especially on a do nothing bank like this. Um, this is going to be one of the few pieces of cover that they have. Um, oh, until we get up here. So this right here is exactly why I use Google Earth. Um, so I bet you you don't see any of this when the water's up. No, nope, you don't see any of this. Um, but wow, yeah, this looks this looks really good. Um, we've got some lay downs here, a tree here, lay down, boulders, more rock, another lay down, more rock, and it just keeps going. Yeah, this is this is prime. This is exactly why I use Google Earth. So again, all of these boats are down here fishing this marina, all four or five of them, with looks like one coming to it. Um, so obviously this riprap stands out. It's obviously pretty apparent that it's a popular area. Uh, but if I was out fishing a tournament or fun fishing, um, I don't know how many of those guys know about this area here um, that we do because we use Google Earth. So any advantage that I can get, I will take because catching fish is hard enough. And so I want to take advantage of every little tool and opportunity I have. So this is, this is awesome. Um, again, we've got some rocks, some lay downs, and it just keeps going. Uh, up this bank um, So I'll show you what we're gonna do with this here in just a minute But let's just keep going up the lake the lake here and see if we can find anything else again more lay downs that come pretty far out um, Some more trees some brush piles some more rock uh, a little flat here uh, when it it could potentially be a good spawning area since there's not a whole lot of creeks on this lake It doesn't look like if we go back to Navionics there's not a whole lot of creeks. We got like one couple pockets over here, maybe one up here, here in the shallows. So there's not a whole lot of creeks. So these bass are gonna spawn in uh, on some of these shallow flats here, especially around maybe some of these rocks. And if we go back to when the water's up, that's definitely shallow enough for them to spawn in. You can see this brown line sort of, uh, just means that it's shallow, wa shallow water. If we go back to Navionics, um, and we zoom in here We can see that it is pretty shallow up there So definitely gonna be a potential area that I would want to uh, look over if I knew that the bass were uh, in a spawning mood spawning time of year Again this point here looks good. Here's the bluff wall. We were looking at on avionics Let's Keep moving up the lake again. I'm just doing this for time's sake. Otherwise, I would be turning uh, my viewpoint around really looking at the bank here um, we've got another big point that comes out here with, uh, with some rock on this hump out here. This actually looks really good. Uh, when the water's up, so when the water's up, people are going to be fishing this point here, right? So they're going to notice that, and this is, it's pretty obvious point. So they're going to be fishing around this, but even the, when the water's up again, I want every advantage I have. Um, uh, so I may slip out and fish out here where it's going to be a little bit deeper where everyone's boat is going to be sitting on top of it uh, fishing this point um, and pretty much ignoring everything that's out here um, but we've got some rock and boulders on top of this so this actually looks really good um, again an area when the water's up that I'm definitely going to want to make sure when I get to this portion of the lake that I either scan or make a few casts on this just to see if there's any bass out holding deeper using some of these rocks as cover. Um, so now we're up at the north end where the islands are. 
um, you can actually see that uh, the creek channel that we looked at on Navionics here looks like it's called Buck Creek Riverbed. So this is the old uh, creek channel that ran through here. Uh, you can see it with these dotted lines. Well, on Google Earth, we can really see it. So you can really see it come out of here, make its way down into the main river, and you can kind of actually see it all the way out here. Um, but as we zoom in here, some things that really stand out to me that I noticed is these trees, brush piles, laydowns, and this riprap bank here that's right on the edge of the river channel. So this is actually something that I would spend quite a bit of time fishing um, just to see if that there's any, any bass holding on it. So like we were talking about with Navionics, anything uh, that is high percentage, so a creek channel, and then anything on top of that that makes it even better. So we have the creek channel here with deep water. We've got some shallow water. And then we've got some cover for these bass to use as they're moving in and out of here. Um, so while most people are probably going to be coming back here and flipping or fishing around these islands, um, which is what I would imagine most people do. Um, let's go back to when it's full. Yeah, so you don't, you don't see any of those trees here. You can barely see some of the top of the rock there um, but again you got a boat here fishing those islands like I was just talking about um, so during a tournament or a fun day these islands probably get hit a lot uh, but I'm not sure how many people would know about some of these trees out here right on the edge of the creek channel so the really cool thing that I like about Google Earth is that you don't just have to work by memory and remember where those laydowns were that uh, that we marked earlier we can actually create waypoints on Google Earth, export them, and take them directly to our electronics. So that way when we hit the water, we know precisely where those laydowns are and we don't have to do any guesswork. So let's go back to where those uh, that rock pile and those laydowns are because that looks like a very high percentage area. So here they are. So now instead of just having to go fish down this bank and guess where all of this is, I want to know exactly where it's at so that way when I get there I'm more efficient I, I waste less time looking for this stuff and spend more time making casts on it and really picking it apart so here's what we're gonna do we are gonna go up to my places we're gonna click add and then we're gonna click add folder it brought it up on my other screen so we're gonna call this CJ Brown because that's the lake that we're working on we're going to click OK. So see how it created a folder here? So now what I want to do is I'm going to zoom in to those laydowns. And again, so when I get to the lake, I know that I'll have a waypoint on my Humminbird, Lowrance, or Garmin, whatever you use. I'm going to have a waypoint that shows me exactly where these laydowns and rocks are. So let's go back up here to the Add Place Mark. We're going to come over here. And we are going to click and drag this place mark down on these laydowns. So we're going to put it right on the end of this laydown. We're going to put it on the end. We are going to call this laydown. Oops. You don't have to label them. I like to label them just because when I put them on my electronics, I know exactly what that uh, waypoint means. So we can change the style and color for if you're on your computer, but. Uh, for time's sake, let's just do it this way. So now we see that there is a laydown created right there. It adds it to our CJ Brown folder. We're going to go ahead and create another one. Drag this window back over here. Put it on the end of this laydown. And we're also going to call it laydown. Hit OK. So now you can see that we've got one, two, three, four, five waypoints created all under the CJ Brown folder. So that way when I know that I export these to my Humminbird units, when I get to the lake, I know that I can immediately run over here, fish this lay down, fish this lay down, this lay down, this tree, these rock piles. Again, I would create a waypoint on every single one of these because I want to know where every little piece of cover is. So at times, depending on the size of the lake, I've had upwards of 50 waypoints created that I've exported. Um, and I spend, again, hours on this, zoomed in, looking for any little subtle changes that gives me a little bit of advantage that uh, not a lot of people would know. Again, we've got some more rock piles up here that I'll put them on, but for now, we'll just keep it simple with this. So now we have these five waypoints here. 
And now we can take these five waypoints, load them onto an SD card, take it out to the boat, put them directly on my hummingbird unit. So again, when I get to the water, I know exactly where all these laydowns are, where this rock pile is. So that way, when I get there, I can really break it down, fish it effectively, and hopefully put some more fish in the boat. So that's going to be it for part one. And part two, where I'm going to show you how to export these because there's a couple things you got to do to make it work. But we're going to export these five waypoints onto an SD card, take it out to my boat in my garage, put it on my hummingbird units, and show you guys just how easy it is to take these five waypoints and put them directly onto your electronics. So make sure you stay tuned for part two and we'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.